This has got to be one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. As much as I really love all canoe trips, there's definitely some you get more excited for than others. For me, this was one of those trips. I've spent a lot of time traveling through parks like Woodland Caribou and Aquatico, but for some reason, I'd never paddled through this remote Northern Ontario park. If you include the adjoining protected areas, Wabakimi is close to 5 million acres. That's twice as big as the province of PEI or the state of Connecticut, and much bigger than Woodland Caribou and Quatico combined. It's swimming in front of me. Half submerged the canoe, the water, my camera. Knowing that this park only sees a few hundred paddlers every year, I knew that this was going to be an interesting trip. With Wabakimi being such an immense park, it can be difficult to plan a trip there there are seemingly endless lakes and rivers to explore. I picked out two spots in particular that I really wanted to see. The first was Wendell Beckwith's cabin on Best Island. It's incredible and looking in there I've wanted to come here for a long time, so it's really cool to, to see it firsthand. And it's literally like he just kind of walked away. This eccentric scientist believed that Whitewater Lake in the heart of Wabakini was the center of the universe. The other site that I really wanted to see was Cliff Lake. I'd heard from other paddlers that it was possibly the most beautiful lake in Wabakini. With sheer granite cliffs and countless pictographs, I seriously couldn't wait to see it with my own eyes. There's pictographs right below me, pictographs all down these walls. Oh, this place is unreal. a very special place. Well, Betty Lou, we finally made it. We are uh, just starting our 10 day trip in Wabakimi after a long, long drive up here to uh, just outside Armstrong, Ontario right now, which isn't too far from Thunder Bay. And we are on Little Caribou Lake. Just super excited to be here. This would be my second trip to Wabakimi. My previous visit was on a flying fishing trip but I'd been trying for years now to come back and explore this park in a canoe. This immense park, located about three hours north of Thunder Bay, is the second largest park in Ontario. The only park that's larger is Polar Bear Provincial Park on the shores of Hudson's Bay. And yes, just in case you're wondering, there are polar bears in Ontario. Wabakimi's waterways straddle the height of land. 
Rivers like the Albany in the north drain into the Arctic Ocean, while rivers like the Kopka in the south of the park flow into the Atlantic after traveling through the Great Lakes. This unique and quite remote Northern Ontario park seemed like a canoeing paradise, and I was really grateful to be there. Awesome. Nice little nice little run to finish the day, so we're gonna find a campsite now. That was fun though. I truly couldn't have asked for a better way to start my trip in Wabakimi. I'd had amazing weather. I'd even had a tailwind almost all day. I was tired though. After driving for nearly 20 hours and sleeping in my truck for a couple hours before taking off on this trip. I was ready to find a campsite. That is a heck of a day one. Could not ask for any better weather. Water was beautiful. Found an amazing campsite. And the trip up here wasn't too bad, so. Oh, I am tired though. <laughs> Well, you got a good night's sleep. Hey, Betty, you didn't move very much, did you? No, no, you didn't. I've planned out today, I'm hoping to make it uh, out of Caribou Bay and into Lone Breast Bay, which is the shorter route that takes you into Whitewater Lake. The weather is calling for a strong west wind in the afternoon. So I'm hoping I can get out of here shortly and uh, make my way out of Caribou Bay. That's the plan. We'll see how far we get today. Okay, so I've made it about 5k in an hour, just under. The wind here is definitely starting to pick up, which is 
kind of what I was worried about. Not that it's a big deal, but <laughs> they're calling for wind up to somewhere around 50 kilometer hour gusts, which I'm not going to be paddling in 50 kilometer hour gusts. Like, it'll be blowing me backwards. Day two was just one of those days. Despite my best intentions of trying to get up early and cover some distance before the wind picked up, well, it just wasn't meant to be. Honestly though, it wasn't a big deal. I'd managed to cover around 50 kilometers in a day and a half, and in a way, I was almost grateful to have an afternoon of rest. Hanging out with Betty Lou, eating some good food, and reading one of my favorite books, sounds good to me. Alright, I think we're ready. Well, that was a long, windy night. Hey, Lou? Yeah, that was a friggin' windy night, holy man. So, quick breakfast, and then uh, we're gonna get on the water here, hopefully. See a caribou in the wood. Really cool. Just on the tree line here. Oh, that is amazing. It's going the same direction I am, so. I might see it down the beach here if it pops its head back out, but regardless, very cool. Thanks to my dog. While rambling onto the camera, I would have an extremely cool encounter with the same caribou that was wandering down the beach, as it would literally swim right in front of my canoe. How amazing is that? There's a moose, a bear, caribou. Oh my God, it's swimming in front of me. Unbelievable. Sometimes you just get lucky. That is very cool. Alright, we have made it to McKinley Lake. It's uh, 5 o'clock and I am really happy with how today turned out. 
So we're going to paddle about two kilometers. There's two campsites. And um, we'll take the first one that's available. Hopefully, it's got a nice uh, view. And I'm trying on this trip to find sites every night that uh, face north, or where at least I can get a good north view for the aurora. The aurora forecast was looking pretty good for Saturday, I think. Um, so that's tomorrow. Um, but yeah, maybe even tonight, we'll see. Here the loons, Betty. Oh, well, what a day that has been. What an absolute uh, gem of a day. And I think I, I uh, screwed up. I got my days mixed up. Today is Saturday, and I'm pretty sure uh, today was the day that they were calling for a high likelihood of aurora. So we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, I can see north just around the corner here. So. Fingers crossed we get to see some Aurora Borealis tonight. That'd be amazing. Just to top off an unbelievable day. So good. I had a great feeling going into this trip that it was gonna be a special experience. And so far, it hadn't disappointed. There wasn't a person around in seemingly pristine wilderness with perfect weather. You really can't ask for anything more than that on a canoe trip. With the aurora forecast looking promising, I woke up in the middle of the night to check to see if they were out. There was a little bit of light. It was super faint though and it was hard to make out. I remember sitting there for well over an hour and literally right as I was about to go to bed the aurora started dancing in the sky. It only lasted a couple of minutes, but it was just another unforgettable experience. Oh my God. Man, morning of day four, I think today is. What an amazing night that was last night with the Aurora coming out. Yeah, I got super lucky. Um, today should be a good day. I got three portages. I think the longest one's maybe 250 meters or so to get onto Whitewater Lake, which is where Wendell Beckwith's cabin is. And uh, if you don't know who Wendell Beckwith is, that's okay. I didn't uh, know who he was until not that long ago. So he's kind of a, he's a bit of an eccentric fellow who lived out in Wabakimi for quite a few years and built these elaborate uh, cabins. One's called the Snail. I think it's underground. And the other one, I don't know if it's got a name or not. I'm actually not even sure how many buildings are there for that matter, but uh, 
or in what state they're in. But uh, he thought that that island that he was on, where he built his cabins, I believe, is uh, he thought that was the center of the universe. And he had all sorts of mathematical studies and scientific things he was doing out there. And he, he was there for years. So, anyways, super cool. I've been uh, wanting to see this for a long time, so I'm excited to get there and check it out. Look at that guy. I'm asking you to listen up. There we go. There we go. It's all I have to give you. It's my helping. Amazing. Look at this guy. Just a beauty. Another one. Just amazing here. It's like five walleye and six casts. I love it. Okay, I gotta keep moving here. The conditions that morning were absolutely perfect. And after a couple of short portages, I was on to the lake Wendell Beckwood believed was the center of the universe. Whitewater Lake. I recently watched a documentary on Wendell and it seemed as though his survival on the land was greatly tied to the people of the Whitewater Lake First Nation, a settlement I would paddle past on my way to Best Island. I remember feeling extremely grateful for the calm conditions. As I can imagine, this lake could really whip up. Being around 30 kilometers long and 10 kilometers wide in spots, it's a large body of water. We are almost at uh, Bast Island. We're only a couple k away from Wendell Beckwith's cabin. I'm getting excited. I think this building is what they called the snail, or what he called the snail, maybe. And you can't go in it anymore, but you can poke your head in, I think. Oh, man. That is incredible. And looking in there, I've wanted to come here for a long time, so it's really cool to, to see it firsthand. And it's literally like he just kind of walked away. but. Like the, the design, the craftsmanship is unbelievable. And the fact somebody lived out here on their own, you know, just amazing, amazing. Okay, we're gonna see the other cabin here. There ended up being three cabins in total. The second cabin was almost completely destroyed with the roof falling in and the wooden frame slowly rotting away. Super cool. It was kind of sad to see these first two buildings in such disrepair, but thankfully the third building was still hanging on. It 
It was an odd feeling walking through that last cabin. Seeing all the old items left inside, you could kind of get a feeling of how simple his life would have been out there. There's a, a guest book here. Quite a few. Quite a few books. Lakehead University, this is 2014. People, some people writing to Wendell Beckwith almost. Huh. 2017. Wow. After spending some time reading the past notes from other visitors, it was time to get back on the water and find a campsite for the evening. That is so cool. That's I, like, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I thought I might look at it and just think it was kind of a couple ruined old buildings, but I don't know why I find that so fascinating, but it's really, really, really neat. And I really do think if you're coming to Wabakimi and um, you can make that part of your route. I don't think you'll regret it and I don't know how long those uh, buildings, well a couple of them are basically toast right now and then the, the, the one that's left standing, I, I don't know how much longer it's going to be around for. So amazing though, truly, truly uh, quite a unique man. It would be a quiet night for me. I managed to find a campsite along the Agoki River with a picnic table, which felt like somewhat of a luxury out there. I was at the halfway mark of the trip, 100 kilometers completed, 100 to go. morning of day five I think today is and we're on our way down the Goki. Lucky to be here right now I can tell you that. Okay so I'm just at this island um, portage right now and it it's kind of tucked there's like two islands one really small one and then a, a bigger one where the actual portage is and it looks like it might be kind of tough to get to that island portage i don't know i'm gonna scout around here see if i can find it Well, there 
there's definitely no uh, running these rapids for this guy. This day would end up being one of my favorite on this trip. Canoeing down the Agoki River and crossing White Clay Lake, I was grateful to find another perfect campsite. This was turning into one of the best canoe trips I'd ever been on. The park was incredible, the weather nearly perfect, and I'd been blessed with great camping and seeing the aurora on not just one night, but for a second time on one trip, the northern lights would come out and light up the sky. I've only seen the aurora a handful of times now, but I don't think I could ever get tired of seeing them light up the night sky. Hey, just after uh, just after eight o'clock in the morning. Beautiful, beautiful day. Day six of this trip was a long day of paddling, almost straight south up the Raymond River on my way to what I was hoping would be the most incredible lake in the park. After a tough 25 kilometers, I would find another top-notch campsite and the wind would calm, which made for another perfect evening in Wabakimi. I think we're done. I think we're done. It's, just, it's gonna be a, a low-key evening tonight, I can tell you that. Kind of a funny night last night. I 
hopped into the tent, put Betty in there, sitting there reading my book, thinking to myself, God, it smells like hell in here. It just smells awful. Like, I mean, God awful. Like somebody died in my, in my tent. So I'm, you know, you kind of get sniffing around, right? And there's not much there. It's, it, it was rock with like a little bit of uh, moss, like tiny, like kind of dried up old moss. I'm looking around, looking around. I'm moving the bags and stuff I have in there. Found a, uh, an old pile of wolf scat that I had apparently set my tent directly on. So, move that out of the tent, everything got a lot better. Awful stuff that wolf scat is, holy. So, lesson learned, and a new experience for me. I'd been canoeing through Wabakimi for the last week now, and I was nearing the last major goal. Cliff Lake was only 20 kilometers or so away, with three portages to complete before getting to this iconic wilderness lake. I could not have asked for better paddling conditions, and I was excited to see if Cliff Lake would live up to my expectations. All right, we have made it. This is a mighty impressive lake, holy, huge, ginormous. I don't know how tall those are, maybe 60, 70 feet up. That's really impressive. There's a trail that leads up and around uh, tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get the chance to do that. Wow, what a place. I'd only been on this lake for a few minutes but it was easily the most beautiful lake I'd been on in Wapakimi, and one of the nicest I'd paddled on anywhere. As much as I wanted to explore the lake that night, it was time, once again, to find another campsite. So far on this trip, I'd made really great progress, and I knew I'd have lots of time the following day to explore. When I woke up the morning of day eight, I knew I wasn't going to be going anywhere. It was hard to judge the conditions from my sheltered little campsite, but across the lake, all I could see were white caps and blowing trees. Not a great sign. I actually kind of look forward to these days, feeling guilt-free about lounging around camp, drinking tea, and reading one of your favorite books on the nicest lake in Wabakimi, there's nothing wrong with that. I really only had around 35 kilometers left to go anyways. One decent day's paddle and I could be out, but I was in no hurry.
They're literally everywhere, these pictographs. Definitely a very special place. There's pictographs right below me, pictographs all down these walls. Oh, this place is unreal. Looks like maybe a moose and a person. I don't know. There's another one over there. Clearest one I've ever seen. That one's amazing. Looks like a, a big canoe. With one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. And there's a moose here. Oh, and there's a person. Wow. There's a person there. I'm not sure what that represents. <laughs> That's incredible. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> well, we've made our way to the end of Cliff Lake. And I can tell you I'll be coming back to this one, for sure. I'd spent a couple of hours slowly paddling down Cliff Lake. In that short time, I'd probably seen at least 100 pictographs, more than I'd ever seen in all my other trips combined. I've never heard how many pictographs are actually on this lake, but if I had to guess, there must be at least a couple hundred. Many of them are very faded and hard to interpret, but there are still so many in pristine condition. What a truly incredible place. I was nearly done the trip with only a handful of kilometers left now. On my way down the Pikitagushi River, I stopped to examine the plane crash on the shores of Wash Lake. Apparently, this Beechcraft 18 was on its way from Fort Hope along the Albany River when it experienced engine problems and belly landed on the lake. Thankfully, everyone survived the crash and the airplane was pulled ashore. Over the years, parts have been salvaged, including the wings and engines, but the frame of the plane still sits on the shore. It's quite a unique sight to see, especially knowing that everyone survived.
Although I was only a couple hours away from finishing this trip, I wasn't scheduled to be picked up until the following morning. So once again, I would luck out and find an amazing campsite. This had truly been one of the best canoe trips I've ever been on. Wabakimi has a different feel to it than any other place I've canoed before. Full of winding rivers, perfect campsites, Roman caribou, incredible pictographs, and all on an epic scale. Millions of acres to explore, and after 10 days and a couple hundred kilometers paddled, I'd barely even scratched the surface. It's one of those special places you could spend a lifetime exploring and still find something new every day. Packing up and paddling across a misty lake my final morning, I knew with certainty that I would be back to explore the amazing wilderness of Wabakimi, a place like no other I've ever experienced. <laughs>